We asked our viewers to pick their current favourite games to see what people are actually playing and looking forward to right now, and we're counting down the list of games I voted for and why. Up next in this month's People's Choice Top 10. Hello, I'm Matthew, and we have 10 games selected by our viewers to review, and joining me with a collection of quirky quips about those games is the wacky, wily wordsmith, Chaz Marla. Uh, uh... Hi. Is there something wrong, Chaz? Oh, I've had this terrible case of writer's block, and I've had trouble coming up with, with, you know, those things people say. Words? That's the one. How bad is it? Well, it's actually not that bad. In, in fact, we never mention it again in this episode. Oh, that's good then. It sounds like we're ready to dive into the first game of you selected, which is actually an expansion. Three of them for Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, including Foundations, Crisis, and Discovery. Among other goodies, these expansions add new mechanisms to the base game, including awards, milestones, upgrade phase cards, and wild tags. What makes a tag wild? Unbridled passion? Whenever a card with a wild tag is revealed, either from the deck or a player's hand, or due to an effect, that player chooses what tag they want it to be and tokens are used to keep track of what tag was chosen for the rest of the game. Well, that explains why viewers Tyler and Aaron mentioned why they're looking forward to these three new modular expansions to continue our journey into Terraforming Mars, and all in one box. A fun game and the option to play cooperatively sounds like a really good time to us. Us being them, Tyler and Aaron set together, like the set of expansions that come in this box. But Tyler and Aaron, they don't come in a box. You can't box them in. They'll break out. Another thing that can't be boxed in are Marvel Gallery prints from Upper Deck, because they don't come in a box. Yes, these prints have outsmarted the entire system, and they helped make this episode possible. Upgrade your gaming space with Upper Deck's Marvel Gallery Prints, a portfolio of over 70 premium, limited edition prints that feature all original art of fan-favorite comic and movie characters. Each of these releases are limited edition, one-time print runs printed on premium paper with several even available on canvas. Each print comes in various sizes, is hand-numbered, and includes a corresponding certificate of authenticity from Upper Deck. Impress your friends, stymie your enemies. So add some color, some character, some charisma to your gaming space with any of the prints in this collection. I did, and now my teeth are whiter and my pets have started returning my phone calls. Follow the link in this video's description to find all these Marvel Gallery print designs and others exclusively at UpperDeckGallery.com while supplies last for each of these limited edition prints. Matthew, what can you do for viewer Duchess, who quote, is intrigued by the look of the game Tenpenny Parks, wants to know more about it? Well. You're in luck, Duchess, because at number nine is Tenpenny Parks, a set collection worker placement game in which players develop land, build concession stands, and assemble an array of attractions to create the most successful theme park. And at the end of a round, rewards are given to the player's fairground, which best exemplifies certain raw emotions. And after five rounds, the player with the most emotionally energized victory points wins. Viewer Josh K says initially, I was skeptical of the game, which is a bit odd. What, what would make someone skeptical of a board game? Perhaps he suspected it was actually a densely packed Eurocentric simulation based on German political infrastructure during the agricultural age. In disguise. Probably. He continues though, adding, but once Rodney's video came out, I wish I had pre-ordered it. I also miss playing Roller Coaster Tycoon as a kiddo. Rodney's tutorial seems to have that effect on people, with Henry W stating, Rodney had a really good tutorial for this one, so now I'm interested. Makes sense to me. Rodney's tutorial is why I bought it. A copy of Tenpenny Parks? No, why I bought that abandoned amusement park down by the docks. Isn't that where all those feral cats went missing? Well, if by missing you mean completely taken over by, then yes. They say... Third time's a charm. Who says that? Everyone, Chaz. Everyone says that. Third time a charm. It's a very popular phrase. I'm saying it right now. Oh, I can't argue with that. 
So you agree with my logic? No, no, I just got a call from my apiologist, so I don't have time to fight with you about this right now. Oh, that makes sense, because in Betrayal, at House on the Hill, players explore Haunted Mansion, exploring spirits and frightening omens until the players encounter a plot twist that causes one of the characters to betray <laughs> the rest of the party. Now, the party must defeat the traitor in their mists before it's too late. Just like here at the Watch It Played office. But the real hero of this story is the upcoming third edition of this game, which balances the game's 50 scenarios, clarifies some rule ambiguities, and improves the player health markers. That's what we wanted. The result of these improvements can be best summarized by viewer Luke P, who says, I have great memories of this game, and the third edition looks fantastic. Which is good to hear because David expresses many people's anxiety by confessing the real betrayal would be if they failed to make working attribute markers after the third time. Fair enough, but the real betrayal would have been if the box was made out of unrecycled aluminium siding. Or, or if they'd just filled the box with rancid catfish. Or if each copy of the game is carried around by an overconfident leprechaun who, every time you go to play the game, punches you in the knee until you give him a coupon for 10% off day-old pancakes down at the local courthouse. Has that happened before? I'm pretty sure that was the original plan for that new Viticulture expansion. Hmm. Next up is a game from 1995. What a year. Plaid shirts, still the height of fashion. And this has seen a recent resurgence of sorts, the game, not the shirts, having been mentioned in a recent episode of On the Radar and Board Game Buyer's Guide. And now here, receiving a flurry of votes from viewers, is Conductiere, in which players compete to conquer provinces in Renaissance Italy. To do this, players battle by bidding, using a hand of cards, representing mercenaries, seasons, scarecrows, and political figures. However, several special effect cards can be played that shake things up and keep players guessing. I recently discovered this game and I really dig it. I mean, I totally agree with viewer Mark W who calls it fiercely competitive area control, nuanced psychological card play, and what's not to love? I don't know, does the latest version of the game come with an overconfident leprechaun? By the sound of it, I, I wouldn't love that. You know what people do love? Candy with money hidden inside? Yeah, everybody loves that, actually. That's, that was a, that was a Pretty, that's a good example. But people also love hearing you mispronounce the name of this game with Vivan J saying, I like it when Chaz says Condottiere wrong. And Jonathan L adding, having heard Chaz talk about this at Aircon, I'm voting for it purely to see if Chaz had mastered the pronunciation of Condottiere. Don't let us down, Chaz. What I find fascinating about this is that the viewers don't know what other viewers say about a game when they vote. So all of these notes are completely coincidental. And are you gonna... Say it? Huh? Are you going to say the name of the game? Konatatere. Fascinating. That's not even remotely close. I'm pretty sure that was on the money. The name of the game is Condottieri. Yeah. Our next game is for anyone who feels like Josh K feels. I love deck builders, I love solo games, I love strategic combat games, and I love LAMP. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Ascension Tactics combines the best of tactical miniatures games with the fast-paced strategy of deck building games. <laughs> you can't do that! Well, Stoneblade Entertainment can because they did. As a result, Ascension Tactics invites players to battle through its campaign mode or try various PvP, cooperative and solo scenarios. Draft cards to build their armies before battle and enter a whole world where even the smallest miniature can still take down mighty beasts by gaining command points and equipping magical constructs. Like me, viewer Raphael is very intrigued by the concept, but wishes it was easier to come by. And Stephen Waffles ponders, what could be better than Ascension with minifigures? Nothing. Nothing is better than Ascension with minifigures. What about, I don't know, friendship? Eh, souls inevitably drift apart. True love? Hearts are fragile. Ah, all that feeling when you rediscover a like $10 bill in your pocket of a pair of jeans that went through the wash. I don't know. I mean, you'd have... Actually, horns. Huh. 
okay, yeah, I'll give you that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good in it, that one, yeah. Several viewers picked the Horticulture Card Cultivating Classic Bonanza, which is a 25th anniversary edition coming soon. And in Bonanza, players start with a hand of random bean cards, and then plant them and harvest them to earn coins. But unlike most card games, you can't rearrange the order of the cards in your hand. So you either use them in that order, planting them in fields in front of you for future harvest, or you trade them with the other players. When harvesting beans, you receive coins based on the number and beanometer for that particular card type. Viewer Autumn P asks, so I hear this game is a classic. Someone tell me why I should get past the yard and play it. Well, how about Mark W, who reinforces his pick for this game by saying, sometimes the classics are the best. This deftly interactive negotiation game deserves some brand new fans. Or well, Helen W, who selected it because I love Uwe games and this seems like one I should own. Helen even included a little contemplative emoji. She makes a rock solid case. Also rock solid? The dirt that players will dig up as meticulously mining moles in the other game that sponsored this episode, Mountains Out of Molehills from the Op. Let's dig into mountains out of molehills where moles have gathered from near and far to compete in the annual Mountain Maker Tournament. In this light strategy game, competitors burrow deep into the ground to compete, piling their molehills as high into the sky as possible. Because the mole who builds and controls the most mountains out of molehills after six rounds of dirty dog eat dog digging will be declared the top tunneler and will win the game. Mountains Out of Mole Hills features a unique two-level game board, bringing your gameplay into the third dimension. My favourite of all the dimensions. Chunky playing pieces to strategically stack and full-colour acrylic standees for each mole. Follow the link in the video description to unearth Mountains Out of Mole Hills, which is available now at your local game store and online at theop.games. And number four is Five Tribes, which twisted the worker placement genre by starting the game with the meeples already in place on the board. You can't do that! You absolutely can do that. I can think of numerous examples. I can point out numerous examples here alone that suggest that you can do that. Everybody is mean. Players must cleverly maneuver their meeples over the villages, markets, oases, and sacred places tiles that make up the board. How, when, and where you displace these five tribes of assassins, elders, builders, merchants, and viziers determines your victory or failure. I'm gonna assume if you belong to a tribe that's made up only of assassins, that's gonna be a difficult home life for everyone involved. <laughs> Sure. Is it any wonder that Christopher Ern still calls this a great strategy worker placement game? Or why Jamie H says that Five Tribes is an immensely satisfying game with lots of depth and plenty of meeples. Or why Brian would love to see this game revisited. It had a ton of love years ago, then it dropped off the radar into oblivion. Or why Chris Meeples says it's great, but it doesn't get played as much as I'd like because my girlfriend always beats me at it. Does that make me a bad person? Expand the award-winning game Parks with Parks Wildlife. Go on, do it. <laughs> Grab your binoculars and prepare for even more animal sightings at iconic wildlife parks featuring all new artwork, new trail sites, new gear, and more season cards. Wildlife also introduces a large wandering bison that moves around the park's cards and grants bonuses to the players that visit those parks. Viewer Takume is really excited for more parks content. The new trail sites and wandering bison will certainly mix things up for hikers. And Rolf L interjects, anything that adds to this wonderful game is fine by me. And Swains says that the original parks is beautiful and a good time, so a new expansion is a happy thing. How can an inanimate object lacking a soul be a happy thing? Are you referring to the park expansion or yourself? Touche. 
As numbers are getting smaller, the games are getting bigger, as with the game in the number two slot that thundered onto the scene this month, Jurassic World The Legacy of Isla Nublar. This game guides players through 12 adventures in which they customise an entirely unique game board and breed new dinosaurs that they cannot unmake. Therefore, the team's faithful choices will have a lasting impact, creating their own unique story of Isla Nublar. Viewer Jeff D is looking forward to this game because I love Jurassic Park and my son is falling in love with dinosaurs. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this and sharing some adventures with my family. And Michael L asks, Legacy Dinosaurs? What else is there to say? Good question. Let's whoa, whoa. see. Well, there's still a... This is a game at number one, so there's probably things to say about that. And we'll also need to say the outro at the end of this video. And I have a dentist appointment later on as well, so I'm probably going to have to say something just before that and then awkwardly during. Dinner conversation. Phone calls. Complaining at people on social media. Sudden outbursts of disdain directed towards the inequality inherent in the universe. Lying to your pets. Yeah, and Ren Devi quips, love a good legacy and dinosaurs are near and dear to me. It's like peanut butter and chocolate. Because that dog's been lying to me about his GED for months. And the game that received the most votes from our viewers this month is Sleeping Gods Distant Skies, a standalone sequel to the game Sleeping Gods set in the same world. As in the original, players trek through a vast landscape of branching storylines and meet vivid characters. But in this version, you interact with the game's atlas on a deeper level, camping, exploring, overcoming obstacles and searching for lost relics. Plus, a new combat and action system allows for even greater agency for players while they travel and explore. Players have a lot to say about this game, including Scott A, who admits still need to play through the first Sleeping Gods, but this looks good as well. And TGL has never played such an immersive game as Sleeping Gods. What an incredible introduction to RPGs. We can't wait to try the sequel. Takume pines that the original Sleeping Gods is an adventure game masterpiece. Definitely sign me up for more quests and stories with Distant Skies. And Stephen Waffles demands, take my money already, okay? Done and done. Unless, unless you meant for the board game. In which case, I owe you an apology. And perhaps a check. Henry W says that this game series really looks like it's going to take flight. <laughs> I see. I see what you did there, Henry. Flight, because the game starts with an aeroplane as opposed to a sea vessel. Well, I'd like the last one did. Very nice. Rachel C says, I am really looking forward to this game, but I am a locket stan. <laughs> All cards on the table. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't. I, I don't. I don't see any. Is there something I should be? I Was it that see. you're looking forward to the game? Oh, looking forward. I get it. It's an, it's an optometry joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. Oh, and Amanda adds, another Ryan Lockett gem? Yes, please. Can't wait to see how this complements the original. And for a compliment to this video, featuring our own top board game picks, continue on to this month's On The Radar episode, or follow the link in the description to our Patreon to find out how to pick the games featured in next month's People's Choice episode. And we'll see you over there.